So somebody said something about a model, something about a controller. What do we do? Model. Model, all right. Cool. What is model? A class? Cool. But what do we need to do, though, right? If, for example, you were building this application and someone said, hey, you need to model. Be like, okay, listen, uh, that's, my, that's my night job on Instagram. But what does that really mean? All right. I think the correct answer, the full answer here that we're looking for, is we need to generate a model. All right? And so I'm just trying to get you into this idea of explaining everything thoroughly as it will help you as you start to answer questions, ask each other questions, ask questions of the instructor, and ultimately when you interview. All right? So for example, like if you're interviewing for a Ruby on Rails job and someone said, hey, you're going to build a brand new Rails app, What's one of the first things you do? And you reply with, oh, I model. Just like, hmm, interesting, right? It's more like, oh, I would generate all the necessary files. I'd probably start with the model. That would be a more context appropriate answer. Is that fair? Cool, great. So don't think I'm like picking on you. This is just to, because I know like you guys have been coding for like four weeks, right? So just even learning the lingo is important to kind of be able to coach and teach. So let's do that. So how do I generate a model with Rails? Rails G, model, cool. And then the model name, so what is the model name we are looking for? Hmm, that's an interesting question, right? Like we have this idea of an app, but we don't really know, it's not fully fleshed out yet. Let's just do like an award, right? Where you're essentially winning this Academy Award at the Oscars, does that make sense? So award, cool, and do I just hit return now? Is this good? I'm good, I'm done? All right, I can add the attributes, right? So what are the attributes of this award? Huh? Name? The name of the award? Sure. Anything else? Do I have to specify that it's a string here? Smart, cool. What other attributes do we have for this award? So the cat, cool. Anything else? Category. Sorry, I'm just being lazy. Category. Fine. Here you go. Enjoy. That's for you. Winner? Cool. Smart. Huh? The year? That's important, right? Can I just leave it like this? I should probably do something like this, right? All right, cool. So I'm going to leave it here because... This is a lot, right? I'm gonna forget and it's bad. Is there any way we can think of like some sort of Boolean possibly? Or are we cool with just leaving an integer as like one extra type of different data structure? Different data type. One before? Interesting. So if you're a previous winner, hmm. should the award itself know if the person that won it previously won, right? So I like where your head's at, I like where you're thinking, but remember where you want to keep that data, where you want to keep the single source of truth. Cool? Great. I think this is fine. So let's let it rip. Boop. Almost there. Nice. All right. So we have generated a model. Is there anything else we need to do? We need to migrate. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> yes. No, you can do that. All right. So I'm going to show you something cool, right? So boop, boop, boop. All right. So we just generated this model, right? Watch this. Nice. If I put D, what do you think that does? I like the intensity, right? Destroy is definitely cool. Um, yeah, destroy is fine, right? Deletes, destroys, div removes, whatever you want to do, right? Basically, it goes back. Now, we know here that we're probably going to generate both a model and a controller for this. And we'll also probably add in some routes, right? All the RESTful routes so far. 
There is another generator I want to introduce you to. Some of you know it, some of you don't, and that's okay. There's another one called resources. And then you simply put in the model name, the name, category, winner, year, integer. And I'll explain what this does. Just kidding. I meant resource. Embarrassing. Nice. So this is what it does. Can you see this or should I? Is this, can you read this in the back? Noise. All right. So it will do this model. I am so silly. It does this model. It does this controller. Right? It builds some tests, some helpers, some coffee scripts, SCSS. Inside your routes, it does awards. So let's take a look at what that does and what it looks like as the file structure. So we have controllers. Look at that. Awards controller. Amazing. Model. Awards model. Views. An empty awards folder. You have inside your routes. Wow. Resources awards. Amazing. Let's take a look at that database. Bam, and it builds the migration for you. So resources will build the model, the controller, add resources in your routes, and build the migration for you. Are there any questions to this generator? Who has used this generator before? Okay, cool. For most of you, some work. All right, cool. This is what we're going to do. In order to not confuse folks, I'm actually going to go inside my routes. If you press Command T, this will search your application. Right? I call this the dirty search because you don't have to fill in everything to be exact. So for example, what is the file structure to get to awards controller from app? App controllers awards controller, right? So what you can do is you can simply do app awards, and then awards control, oops, yeah, the awards control is right here. So app controller awards controller. You don't even have to finish the word. You could just kind of half, half do it. It's amazing. So you can do app controller awards controller, right, and then just controller, and it'll just give you that file. So if you understand the file structure, you can search this fairly quickly. You can also just type the whole thing in, right? Like I'm looking for the awards controller file. It'll find it for you. Cool? So right now I'm just going to look into my routes. And what does resources awards do? It builds what? What routes does it build? all the routes to ever exist on the entire face of the earth? Every single one? <laughs> the lucky seven. Say again? Yeah, it builds the restful routes. Right? It builds the restful routes. That's very important because, believe it or not, there are more than seven routes. Right? If I wanted to, I can do a get to slash Charlie is the best. This is now a real route. Did resources build this for me? No, right? So what I want to show you is something interesting. How can I check my routes? Right? If you're on Rails 5, you can do Rails routes. If you're on Rails 4 or lower, you'll have to use the command break routes. So Rails routes, come on, don't break on me. Oh, embarrassing. Cool. So you see how it does like awards, awards new, and then it does this like ID interpolation for the params, which we went over last time. Yes? Are you guys tired from lunch? Sleepy from lunch? Cool. All right. Do you, do you want me to just yell at you for like the next hour? Great. Let's do it. <laughs> Let's do it. All right. Cool, 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 cool. What if I'm doing something smart and I'm like, I'm going to use resource on my routes and I forgot the S. Let's take a look at what happens. And I see my routes. I'm like, great, all my get, put, patch, post, delete is there. And I see that I have a new edit, show, update, destroy, create. My rest of routes are there. And I run that. Is there something potentially missing from these two? The potentially missing, potentially missing. Let's take a look real quick. 
Let's take a look. Wonder what it could be. Wow. Yes. Right? And it's because resource and resources will build you different things. If you'd like to run down the rabbit hole, feel free to check the docs to see why resource, the singular, exists and what it is that it does. Right? It would be potentially an interesting blog post if you have no other ideas to think about. But just be aware that that exists. And without the S, it will not interpolate your ID. Cool? Questions on that? Man, I knew that explanation was good. Thanks. Great. So let's, let's build some routes. Right? What's the first thing we want to do? All right. Typically, typically, the first thing is the index. And that's just because it shows all of the instances of a particular resource, right? So let's actually make some before we build this index because we'll need these, this test data, all right? You want to make sure you test everything. You want to test everything because then you'll catch yourself. Don't worry about trying to memorize all this. If you test everything, you will catch yourself. Just trust the process. So for example, how would I create a brand new award? I need to do I need to go where and to go into the console right can I create an award right now who says yes who says no who thinks I'm trying to trick you oh that's not funny you guys because you haven't had Mike Cheng yet uh, Mike Cheng says that a lot and that's my impression of him but since you haven't had him it's not funny sorry cool it's not gonna work because I haven't migrated Cool. So now it should work. Oops, oh, embarrassing. Cool. So how do I do this? How would you create a brand new award? How would you create a brand new award? So smart. Oh man. What if I forgot all the attributes? What file can tell me where all my attributes are? Cool. Do you see that? What did I just do super fast? Command T, and then I search for the schema file. And then I just press enter. All right. I literally bring this mouse as a crutch, because if I don't, I will use too many keyboard shortcuts, and they'll go too fast. So I'll try my best to explain what they are and emphasize when I use them so that you can practice them yourselves and get faster. So I have all these. Cool. That's Alt-Tab, so just in case. No, that wasn't funny. OK, good deal. Name? All right, what's this award name? Best TCF. Ooh. What's the category? Oh, wait. That's the winner. Oh, forget it. Oh, man, we messed up. We created a bunch of extra categories. But it's all right. We'll just call it... The, we'll just call it... Hmm. What do we want to name this best TCF award? Mr. Slash Mrs. Nah. Just powerful, all right, Dr. Powerful. All right, the category is going to be best TCF. No, that sounds crazy. Yeah, whatever, it's cool. Who is the winner? Everybody. Cool. What year is this? Yep, it's party like it's 1999. Cool. Are there anything else we need to add here? Yeah, that looks good to me. All right. Let's make another award. Does anyone have a name for an award? The Dundies. All right. And what category? Does anyone actually remember any of them? Huh? The, the category, um, I don't know. Just put Goldface. That was like the character uh, Jim had to play, right? And who was the winner? It was Jim. Jim was Goldface. All right, what year was that? Oh, the good old days. Probably somewhere in 2007, I guess. What other else? What else? We have another Dundies. Most Dwight. Very good. And who won that? D. White. Very good. 
also in 2007. Great, that's enough data. Unless you guys want to make something else. Thanks. Cool, let's start the server. All right, so I have a bunch of this data, right? And typically we'll start with the index. We do not have to start with the index. We don't have to start with the index. Does anyone actually need me to go through and create index? Great, so we will not start with it. Watch what happens. Nothing. So, what I want to show you today are forms. So, how do you typically, the RESTful route, show a user a form to create a brand new award? New? Cool. What's the RESTful route? Okay. I get to where? Slash awards. Slash new. Was there any confusion as to how this came about? Cool. And what RESTful route is this? Which one? Is it index, show, new, create, edit, update, or delete? New, right? <laughs> this seems silly, but when I asked you guys last week, there was a little confusion here. Just kidding. You guys just need practice, right? Cool. So, and where is this going to? If I do a awards new, where should this go to? The awards. Nice. I like that. Where should this go to? The awards controller, right? The awards controller. And what action do we want it to go to? Hash name? Hash name new? Right, to the action new, right? So it's just going to the awards controller for the action new. This is what this really means. It's just my routes. Let's break down how Rails works super fast. When I go to localhost 3000, right, notice that there's literally nothing here. And it says, yay, you're on Rails. Rails will automatically build this default slash route and show you this very cool you're on Rails image. That's all it does. How can I go from here to a get to awards slash new? Yeah, localhost 3000 slash awards slash new. And if you're not sure, what you can do is you can literally copy this exact route, like magic, and paste it right here. This makes sense because this is where I want to go. What's happening here? Huh? It's an extra apostrophe in where? Oh, embarrassing. Cool. What does this mean? Right, it literally says could not be found. The action you could not be found in the awards controller. This should make a lot of sense. So you've learned about a couple of things in terms of how to write code. The first thing in mod one, you've learned about something called TDD, right? Does anyone remember what that stands for? Right, the Power Rangers, right? You guys learned, you guys took the Power Rangers one? What did, it's not Morphin Time? What is it? Uh, Voltron, what does he teach you guys for test-driven development? The palindrome? I'm talking to, uh, <laughs> I'm like making stuff up. You think I'm crazy. All right. So one of the last lectures you get in mod one is about test-driven development, right? Right? Okay. All right. However you learned it, I teach it a different way, apparently. It's just, here's test-driven development. There it is. Oh, that's fun. <laughs> Anyways, so there's test-driven development, right? And all that is essentially is I will test each one of these methods and then I will run all the edge cases against it and then I will continue building out my method so that I can account for all the potential edge cases. Here, right, you're talking about the internet and like a website. How do you test something like this? Does anyone understand like what the... Testing style is. Capybara is like the 
the gem that tests this. But the idea here, yeah. Close, the idea here is that when it comes to methods, right, like a palindrome method or reverse a string method, those are easily testable because that method takes an input and gives an output. I can test that very easily. When you test the website, what you have to test is how a user will interact with your website. And how a user interacts with your website can be summarized in one word, and that's behavior, right? So the idea is behavior-driven development. BDD is how to test a website. So with BDD, as you can imagine, Capybara, friend or not your friend? Best friend, unfortunately with Capybara, it's difficult to test behavior in an extremely specific way because it forces you to write code that passes tests. And that's not really what it's about. So what I would like everyone to kind of get an understanding of in mod two is if you can make it work, if it works, if it does what you want it to do, if it meets the deliverable, move on. All right, you do not have to pass the test in mod two. Do not pass go. Do not collect $200 and just move on. It's fine. Cool? Are there any questions on that? BDD is very difficult to test without hard coding certain values. At this point in your development career, it's, hey, I, have, I need a form that creates an award. Great, I'm gonna build that. And if the tests fail, don't worry. Does your form create an award? Yes or no? If yes, just move on. Cool? So you're not chasing those green lights anymore. All right? Are there any questions? Yes. That was a Monopoly reference. Thank you. Destroying families since like 1970 something. You don't really need the reference to understand when I tell you. Do not worry about the tests. If you can get the feature and the deliverable, you're good to go. Cool? Any, any questions? Thank you, yeah. No biggie, appreciate you, awesome. So why would this say the action new could not be found in the awards controller when I specifically told it, hey, when I get a get request to awards new, Remember, in the URL, when I press enter, I'm making what kind of request, what kind of HTTP verb specifically? A get, right? So I'm literally doing a get to awards new. That makes sense. The first thing Rails would do is check to see, does that route exist? So for example, if I were to do local 3000 slash Charlie is the best, and I hit enter, what am I really doing? What HTTP verb am I doing here? A get, a get to what route? Charlie's the best, right? Cool. It says no route matches Charlie's the best. What a shame. Because we know that's true, right? Obviously Charlie's the best. So it checks the routes first. It's the first thing Rails will do. And if that route exists, it will say, great, what do I do with that route? Well, let's check. If I have a get to Charlie's the best, and I go back, what do you think the next thing will happen? Something about the action, right? Maybe like, hey, what controller should I handle this with? No? Missing controller, which makes so much sense because now that the route exists, how does Rails tell the route what to do? What view page should I send the user? What action should I do? Right, I have to tell it the controller to handle this. So. I can simply go to a controller like Ally and not provide any hash, right? What do you think would happen now? If I do a get to slash Charlie's the best and I specifically tell it to go to the Ally controller. Controller key on the roster. Please check your routes, right? I'm missing the controller key. So let's do what kind of action do we want? That's correct. 
It's in a hash somewhere, the way Rails will evaluate it. Yes, but don't worry about that. What kind of method do you want this to go to? Let's say the alley controller existed. Smort. Cool. Let's go to smort. Now it'll say that there's no alley controller. Does that make sense? Cool. All right. So I could tell this class is very smart. And you want me to move much faster. I could tell because there's a lot of like sleepiness happening. So I'm going to move much faster to meet you at your pace. If I go too fast, slow me down. This is for all the people who are past this. Cool. So let's do it. Boop, boop, boop. Awards new. Could not find action new. So that means that on my awards controller, I must define an something called new, right? So def new, boop, boop, boop. great. So what happens now when I refresh? Well, it will find the new and then automatically, inherently, it will render this new.html. Unfortunately, I do not have the new.html. So the error I'm getting is missing template for this request. I can see this here inside my views, inside my awards, I do not have a new template. So let's make it. If I press A on the folder, just A, it'll open up this thing where I can open up a new file. I can create a new file rather, so I just put new.erb. And then if I refresh, what should happen? Well, the template is there. So it'll actually run the template. Template is blank though. So p tag, cool, refresh, and you'll see cool there. Great. Is that the speed you would like me to go at? This is for you. I'm here to adjust. Cool. That seems fine with me. So the onus becomes if there are questions or I say something and I lose you, I need your participation. Just this one question. Cool. Who feels comfortable raising their hand, asking a question if I lose you? If I do not get a unanimous hands up, I will move slow. I will, all right, then let's move. Cool, here we go, airborne. Boop, boop, boop. All right, cool. So in this new, all right, what do I need to put in here? What are the two things that I typically look for? I look for something, right, where I can interact with the model, and then I have to send back a response, all right? We talked about the request response cycle, something with the model, and then something with the response. That's what the controller does. So do we need anything for the model in this particular instance? Like this, award equals award.new. Cool, right? So we have this instance, right? Why do we need award equals award.new? Right? I'll explain, right? So that is in fact correct, but allow me to explain. We have a render, and then what are we going to render? The new, right? So if I refresh, it should still work. Boom, boom, boom. Boom, boom, boom. So let's go inside this new, right? What I want to talk about is a couple things. I want to talk about form tag. I want to talk about form four. And I want to eventually get to like link two, button two, right? Maybe button tag if we have time. Cool. So that's what we'll do. We'll just comment these out. All right. The first thing I want to start for with is this form tag. This form tag, how do we use it. Well, I would like to see what is this form tag. Hmm. Okay. Boom, boom, boom. And if I look closely, even at the docs, I can see exactly what form tag does. And that is, it starts a form tag. Oh, that wasn't helpful. It will literally build out a form for me. So if I put a form tag to slash posts, it will generate this HTML for me. So the Rails helpers simply just generate HTML. So what I can do is, hmm, why doesn't this highlight? Because it looks like Ruby, right? So 
square thing? Oh yeah, this is a package. Yeah, it's called snippets. Uh, literally this, ready? So you can look at the lecture later, snippets. Cool. All right, so yeah, totally very valid, right? So if I see form tag and I put a, oops, whoop, right here, slash posts, it'll build this form action for me. So I can do form to slash posts and let's take a look at what it builds. Awesome. Weird. Did you see anything? Me neither. But let's check the inspector. Literally a form to slash post. Why did this not come up on the page? Well, it didn't come up on the page because there's nothing to render. A form itself doesn't render anything. So just because it's not there doesn't mean it's broken. What I can do is I must therefore add some sort of input. That's usually how forms go, right? There's a form and then there's a bunch of like inputs. Typically looking for user input. So let's see if there's a form tag, is there some sort of Rails input helper or builder or something like that? Hmm. Form helper, text field form for text field tag. Great. That looks amazing. Text field tag. How do I use this text field tag? Well, it looks like if I just put this it'll build this input for me. Does everyone kind of follow along now? Great, so bloop, I just copied it, all right? Control C for those that want to know the magic. And I just put this. So if I were to go back to my page and refresh, I should see exactly that. Cool, and look at this. Hmm, I put this text field tag, but look how many inputs I got. I got three, but I know for a fact that this text field tag only builds one of them for me, All right? You can see it only builds this one. So what you can see is naturally there's something called UTF-8, which is like a text encoding for the browser. And then there's another input type that's hidden with something called the authenticity token. This is what is known as a CSRF token, C-S-R-F, cross-site request forgery. What this does is it prevents somebody from creating a form, hacking a form on your website, and then submitting data. So let's prove this. I can do a regular form tag like I would in Sinatra. I can have a regular input and I can have a name be something and then I can have another input and let's just put submit. Cool. According to, according to this form right here, ready? Let's put uh, H1 and just put regular old form tag, regular old form HTML. And then we'll put another H2 and this would be form tag. And then eventually, all right, we will get to form four. So far so good? Yeah. Oh, that's just a thumbs up, not a question? Okay, cool, thanks, sweet. No, that's, that's very helpful. So you got regular old form, form tag, and form four coming up. So let's take a look, H1 regular old form. So I can see that this is my regular old form for my HTML. So when I open it, I see the text with something and then just the submit. If I were to put something in here, bloop, bloop, right? And then I submit, what do I get? Something about no route mode matches post to awards index HTML. Where did this come from? Well, it came from exactly where I thought it would, and that is it's a post, right, which is correct, and it's going to something called index.html. So naturally, it's just looking under awards, something called index.html. I can hard code it, have it go to post to slash custom route right here. Cool? I spelled that wrong, but it's fine. Unless it's not fine, then I will fix it. Great. If I hit refresh, oops, just kidding. 
And if I hit refresh and I do something, I hit and I submit, it says no route matches. That makes sense. Cool. How can I make this route work? I can go into routes, right? And then I can simply just go, well, let me just make this post to custom route right here. Cool. What do you think will happen? Oops. Yeah. This exact same error. Does everyone understand this? Like where this route error came from? This is a thing that I like to do in Rails. It's called EDD, right? This new type of driven development. It's called error driven development. Cool. And I can point to the awards controller at a action of huh? Uh, just just put gains for now, right? Just any old action. Cool. Gains. Cool. So if I were to go here and I submit. It says, could not find gains. That makes sense. Let's go back here. Boop, boop, boop. Def gains. So now, if I were to refresh and I were to actually submit something, something, all right, and I hit submit, it will look under my routes, all right, go to a post to slash custom route. I have to find out, does that route exist? It does, and it tells me to go to a controller of awards method called gains. I'm in this gains controller. What should this then respond with? It should respond with possibly maybe talk to the model and then talk and then send a response back. Here, if I don't put anything, it'll automatically try to implicitly render something called gains.erb inside my awards controller file. You following along? Awesome. What happens when I actually submit? Invalid authenticity token. So if my route gets complete, Rails will block it because it does not have that authenticity token. Is everyone following that? It will block it if it doesn't have an authenticity token. Rails helpers, right? will automatically build it for you. This form tag will automatically build this authenticity token for you versus using just a HTML form. Cool? Are there any questions as to why you would use a Rails helper over a standard HTML form like you did with Sinatra? Which you can now assume is Sinatra inherently secure? No. Cool, just plus one for Rails. Yeah. That's a very good question, and that's a very Sinatra specific question, so I'll, I'll answer that offline. Anything else? Yeah? So, that's a very good question. So, this is what it will do. Let's go back to awards slash new. If we look at the inspector, what you'll see is this right here, right? This authenticity token has this like crazy long randomly generated value. What this does is Rails will generate this, this random string, and store it. If a form submits back to the Rails server, I will check to see, hey, do you have a password of XH89QMSM Cowboy, whatever, right? If it does not match, I can assume then I did not generate the form. Rails did not generate this form. And therefore, no matter what, if I didn't generate the form and I'm getting form data, somebody else generated it and I don't trust it. So I will block it. And so this is just a sort of hashified string that's encoded, and it's just designed to be like this random thing that no human being should be able to just luckily guess. Does that answer your question? That's a good question, cool. Does that make sense for everybody else? What this like uh, authenticity token is? You can create this manually by adding it inside here, 
and I'll show you guys offline if you want, if you're interested in that. But in the meantime, great, form tag. It builds the authenticity token for you. Cool? You can tell it where to post to. So where do we want to actually post this form to? We want to post it to what restful action? A create, right? And what is the restful route for create? It's post to slash awards, right? Let's let's think about this. Cool. We can go back to Rustular. And we talked about restful routing. I walked around, and you guys were like, yo, I'm all good. I know everything. Quiet lecture. You scared me. Cool. Talk about awards. Uh, the create a new award is a post to slash awards. Create a new award is post to slash awards. Are there any questions of this restful route? Cool, right? I didn't just like make this up, right? I just like make it up. Cool. So naturally, if I put awards here as the argument for the form tag, then I would see. Actually, let's get rid of this. You guys cool to get rid of this? You guys still want to see the old school form? <laughs> Trash. Unsecure. And out of here. Cool. Just regular form tag now, right? Cool form tag. Great. Now you see this, and it will do a post to slash awards. How did it get it? I literally gave it an argument of slash awards. Did I tell it to post though? Where in my code does it say post? It doesn't because forms by default will send a post request. Is there a way I can change the HTTP verb, the method for this form? Well, I would probably find that in the docs. So I can see, hmm. I can literally give it a second argument and change what it does. So if I wanted to, instead of doing this, I can go, hey, you know what? Do not do this post to awards. Instead, do a get to awards. Or do a put to awards. Or do a delete to awards. Does that make sense? So let's check it out. If I were to save, I want to go back. I now see a post to awards, but if you remember from Sinatra, right, there has to be this like underscore hidden thing. You gotta like fake it and trick the internet because the internet only, know, the HTTP one only knows get and post. Is that familiar? Cool. And so then you have to just put value delete. And there it is right there. So remember, form tag will by default post. So I'm just gonna leave it alone. Does everyone understand the routing of forms, where it will go, how Rails will process it? Thank you. Awesome. All right. <clears throat> I talked about this before in the Sinatra labs. I'm sorry, in the Sinatra lectures. And that is like, hey, you have this cool form that's awesome, but it doesn't submit. What a terrible user experience. How can I get this form to submit? Well. I already know Rails has helpers when it comes to forms. It has helpers when it comes to like input fields like text field, tag, or something like that. Is there some sort of Rails submit helper? Right? You saw submit tag just came up? So smart. It is literally called submit tag. And this is what it will build for me. Type submit. Cool? And I can change how it's written because look, if I don't put anything, it values, it evaluates to save changes. If I give it an argument, it'll change this right here. So let's mess with that. Ready? Boop, boop, boop. I press Command C for copy. For those that are curious. But this is an HTML file, but I want to embed some Ruby. So I use the squids your class likes to call them. Okay. And all I'm just going to put is submit that form. Good answer. Good answer. That's a Wheel of Fortune reference for those that want to know. And there it is. Cool. So where will this po form submit to again? One more time. Post to awards. Yes. Wow. 
Whoever sounds like Winnie the Pooh, you are absolutely correct. Post to slash awards. Do I have that route of post to slash awards? Do I? I don't. So what can I do to solve this lack of route? Well, I could just make one, right? A post to slash awards. And what is that going to do? Well, that could hit what controller? Awards controller, right? Amazing. And then that controller has to have some sort of action, right? This could be make a new award, right? That's a little lengthy, but what is it really doing? It's hitting this create action, which is the restful route. So let's go back to the awards controller. Do I have a create action in here? Cool. Raise your hand if you can follow along this route to controller to action, sort of MVC. If you are too cool to raise your hand, I'm just going to assume that not only are you super cool, you're also super smart. So we'll continue. Def create. And what I want to do is I simply want to pause this, right? Has everyone seen this before? The buy bug? This is like binding pry, but for Rails. So if that is the case, all I have to do is put in Charizard, right? And I can submit that form. And what will that do? Who thinks it'll hit the buy bug? Okay, nobody. Well, it'll hit the buy bug. I know, don't worry. I, know. I move kind of cool. I move kind of fast on that one. All right, so submit the form. Because when I submit the form, it's going to do a post to slash awards. If I check my routes, there's a post to slash awards. Hitting the awards controller, the action of create, back to my awards controller, action of create, it'll hit the buy bug. Cool? Boop. And there it is. As promised. Signed, sealed, and delivered. I'm yours. Right? Stevie Wonder. So, what do I... You guys are giving me nothing. This is just me talking to myself out here. What do I want to check once I'm here? Params. Yes, the params. Params. When I check my params, that is what is coming across. Remember, the post is when a user submits data to the server. I am now in my back end. I'm in my controller. And I'm simply asking, hey, what did the user submit? What are the parameters that came across this post request? And so I could see the params. I could see the UTF-8. Check, right? That's just the encoding. Don't worry about that. Google that later. It's not really important. You see the authenticity token come out, and that matches. That's good. And so it didn't give me an invalid authenticity error. And then I see name Charizard. Where do you think that came from? It came from the input field. In the input field. Why does it have a key of name and a value of Charizard? Well, if we think back, ready, from the Sinatra days, what is the name attribute? The name attribute will, will determine what the key is in the params that get sent over. So I have it as name. So naturally, name will point to whatever gets submitted in this input, this Charizard. So I have name pointing to Charizard. Something called commit, which is submit that form. This is coming from this right here, the submit input, because there's a name with a commit value. So commit is going to come across as the key in the params with the value of whatever that input is, which happens to be submit that form. So I get commit, submit that form. I snuck that in there just to explain this point. And then I get some other things like what the controller, what the action is. Cool. I get something weird called permitted false. That's interesting. And then what do we normally do here? We normally do something like award.create with the params, right? That's normally what happens here. Yes? Cool. Oh, man, that's weird. It says that there are some sort of forbidden attributes. What does that mean? Does anyone know? Has anyone gotten to this forbidden attributes error? Absolutely. So what I can do is I can check my params, and then I can simply require, require what? 
Hmm? Award, like this. Yeah? Cool. And what does that give me, interestingly enough? Yeah? Yeah, let's find out. Why did require award not work? Because when I'm requiring, what it's asking for is what is the key that you want? Is there a key of award in here? No, there's just a key of name. It's just a key of name. So naturally, when I put name in, there is a key of name, and that points to Charizard. So far, so good? Uh, is it a Ruby method? I think. I don't think so. I think it. Uh, I think it's Active Record. But let's find out. Uh, it's not. I think it's Active Record. But I will actually answer that offline. I don't actually know. I don't remember to be honest with you. Could be part of the hash, but I think it's Active Record. So. Is anyone confused as to how I got dot require with the key of name? Notice how earlier this said permitted false. I can literally tell it to permit. And what do I want it to permit? Name or true? Why doesn't this work? Because I think that this is kind of like where you want to go, right? Undefined method permit for the string Charizard. Who wanted to do like dot permit or I just jump the gun? Okay, cool. We'll start over. What I can do is I can permit from params key name. And now you see something called name permitted true. On my params, on a hash, I can specifically allow certain attributes. So what is a word again? Great, there's like a name here and like a category. Can I do award.create with params.permit and a key of name? What does that give me? What does this evaluate to? Well, let's see if I pass it in instead. As a name. What I'm doing here is I'm saying I'm creating an award at a key of name and I'm passing in permitted values. So what you'll see is only name got created for ID for category was nil, winner was nil, year was nil. Does that make sense? Remember, you're the one that told me you were gonna ask questions. The covenant, the accord. Are we pirates? Yeah? What is what? Yeah, so when I did params.permit, I called dot .permit on a hash, and I simply whitelisted the key of name, saying that, hey, this is secure. I know for a fact that if you get a key of name to come across in this hash, it's safe. And please allow this to write to the database. Otherwise, by default, you could see that um, permitted is false, by default. And that makes sense, right? You don't want anyone to just submit data and write it to your database and just wildly update your database. You want to make sure the attributes that you pass in are whitelisted. So, Here's how we can extrapolate that and go to the next level. Oh, dang. That's all right. Let's keep going. Cool. So here's what we can do. If I go back to my 
text field, right? Remember, I have name here. I can put a word with a key of name. Let's take that out. Notice here my name value changed. Why would this be useful? Well, let's think. If I were to submit, right? Submit some stuff. And I submit the form. And now I'm back in my buy bug. I can check the params. And now I will see that I have award as its own nested hash with name at a key of submit some stuff. So what I could do is I can do params.require. And what is this key? Award. So can I ask for what is the key of award give me? Now I have my own nested hash. I can add to this nested hash by simply creating more attributes. So what I want to do is do this, boom, boom, boom. Award at a key of category. Award at a key of, what was the other one? Winner. What was the other one? Year. Cool. So let's see how useful that could be at some point. Oh man, that's, I didn't label them and that's fine. So we have like an award name. We have a cool category and we have, yeah, who won this and then a good year, uh, 1988 was a good year. You're the dragon. Cool. Any questions on why I just added four inputs? Who knows why I added four inputs? Great. Does anyone else know why I added four inputs? There are four columns on the database, yes. So there are four columns on the database, good. And I just need to add inputs to match all them. So if I check my params again, I can even check the params at a key of award, and I can get all of them. I can also check my params, and I can require award. The reason we use require is because when I use require, I cannot assign any values. When I use this, I can actually assign values. I can literally put equals after this and assign a value. I cannot do that with require. So it's inherently a little bit safer. Cool? It's like your two second tangent. So what I can do is from here, I can then permit certain attributes, right? And so inside this, I can permit name, I can also permit year, but I don't want to permit category or winner. So what do I get back? I just get back a hash with only those two attributes. All right? So then I can just add on to it, category. Oops, spell that. Typo. Cool. And then I can also add winner. Cool. With that, can I do award.create with, oh man, this is long. <sighs> Super long. Can I do that? Yeah, totally. And this right here will whitelist all those specific attributes. So what I want to do is I want to be able to, in my controller, take advantage of the fact that this means something when the params come across. Right? I can simply say these are going to be my awards params. Ugh, look at this indentation. Trash. Let's do this. Are there any questions as to what I'm doing here? 
as to why I created this own, my own method for this. Can anyone tell me why I did this or what this might be useful for? Anybody? Yeah, go ahead, go for it. Correct, this right here will scale. As I want to adjust or create or add any attributes, I can simply add it here and then call this method whenever I want. So I can do award.create here with the award parameter. Do you have a question? Yeah. Yes. Um, the question is, the labs say we should use this as a private method. Should we always do that? Yes, absolutely. So here, right, we interact with the model, and that is going to be actually creating this thing. And then we have to figure out what is the response, right? When we think about these params, and we're talking specifically about whitelisting them, if you remember back in mod one, there was a way to create public and private methods. Anything defined here is considered public, right? In terms of your params, do you want your params to be accessible outside sort of the instance of this controller, right? No, that should be something secure that you hide. So you can say private. And now anything after private is like a private method, only to be called internally. And so this is uh, what you see as a very common convention. Right? So the labs are absolutely right. This right here is a convention known as strong params. So we'll just put a little strong params there. Cool. Are there any questions on strong params? Or why I had to do require? Or what is permit and what these attributes are? No, you can have as many of these as you want. Um, it doesn't make a lot of sense right now, but it will as you scale your app, right? Like let's say you want to edit something. Um, you, there are certain attributes you don't really want to ever edit. All right, so for example, if this was like a bank account, you never want to edit your account number. So even if somebody typed in their account number, you never want to permit account number. So even though that Technically, account number is an attribute of your bank account class. There are some things you just never want to be able to like pass in. So sometimes uh, you can have like deposit, and then you can like up it, or you can have like withdrawal, and then you would change what you want to permit. So you would have multiple of these methods based on what you want to do with your application. It should not always be every single one, but for your purposes of CRUD, as you create your own applications, typically you will find that you will use that, but do not think that that is always the case. Is that fair? I'm trying to like build your mind for scale. Awesome, so we covered strong params. Yeah? The splat operator, that is a mod one lesson and I'll I'll tell you about that offline, unless everybody has that question. That's two. Three. Okay, we're moving on. I'm, we're just going to move on. I, I, I will show the three of you after, after lecture. Cool? So, I create this thing, right? And then that is essentially me interacting with the model. Is there anything else I need to do with the model after I create this? Not really, right? I just made the, made the object in the database. So what is the response? What do I do? Do I just render? I render a create view. Why would I redirect and not render?
That's exactly right. If I render, I'm simply going to show a view. The URL will stay the same. I would like to, in fact, instead redirect. Oh, sorry. That is a really bad habit. You didn't catch that, right? Redirect to where? Maybe like the show page of like the, the one I just made. So how can I do that? Forward slash show. Does this work? Let's think about the RESTful route, right? We have awards and then we have the ID. But is this going to work? Probably not. That's terrible. So I can do something like award equals to award.create. And then I can interpolate the award.id. Notice how I do not make this an instance variable. That's because I don't need access to this instance variable in the view. I do not need access to it in the view, so I will not create it. If I use the instance variable, it means that I'm going to use it directly in the view. Here I'm doing a redirect to. And so naturally, the show method looks like what? It talks to the model, and then it sends back a response. Here, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the params from here, and I'm just going to do at award equals to award.find. Oops, with the params at a key of ID. This is what I will use inside the I will use this award inside the show, not this one. Is there any questions as to why this is not an instance variable? Cool. If we have the RESTful routes, instead of hard coding it, I can simply do award path, passing in the award object itself. Rails smart enough to see the entire object and go, great, it only wants the ID. Or you can give it the ID directly. You can also be really grimy and just pass it the object. Redirect to this brand new object. That'll hit the show. Are we cool? You sure it's not like this? Lord. All right, cool. You guys are smart. Great. Any questions so far on show and this create? Do I have a route for show? Did we make it? No, we didn't. So let's make it. It's going to be awards, right? ID pointing to the awards. Cool. Are there any questions on this RESTful route? Yeah. This right here, right, are fun helpers. Yes. But if you, if you hard code one, it'll give you that, right? So besides Rails routes, I can always go to localhost 3000 slash Rails info routes, and it'll tell me what my routes are. And I think it's actually stuck in the bug. Oh, I can't use that, sorry. Is it not like this? Yeah. Huh, interesting. Didn't like spaces. It, you have to put underscores in there. Good to know. Anyways, if I use this, all right, you see this fun helpers path? If I don't put it, Rails is very smart. And that is if I have some sort of route, if it recognizes that it's like a RESTful route, it'll give you the RESTful path. 
But look, custom route right there. Look at this helper. I didn't write that, but Rails will build it. See, I didn't write that. But if I wanted to, I can customize this and just be like, help me helper route awesome. And guess what this becomes? Help me help her out awesome path. This is just for you as a helper. Meaning, let's take this full circle. I have this as fun helpers, and you could see it, the fun helpers path. Cool? Going back to my awards controller, if I want to redirect to the show page, want to redirect to this show page, I can do this. Passing in the award.id. Are there any questions on this helper method in routes? Who understands the helper method in routes? So that means if I that means that if I don't see your hand, I will approach you afterwards and ask you about it. Who understands the helper method in routes? It's not to sing you out, it's only because I want to help you and I want to know who it is. Good deal. So we hit this create. Say again. You will use what you want. Yep. Yeah. For example, right? For example, um, this is obviously a silly name, right? This is like a silly name. So let's get rid of it. Cool. And therefore, will this work? No, right? Fun, fun Helpers is trash. What a trash name. Gone. Boop. Right? But we know the show path exists, so we can just redirect it right to that object. If I wanted to, right, I can see this, and I can go bloop, and I can do only, oops, and I can do which ones? Try again. Who says index? Where do you see the index page being built? Which one of these routes is the index? Stop pattern matching, right? If it's not there, it's not there. Don't make it up for no reason, right? I see a new, I see a show, and I see a create. If you use this on your code challenge, I'd be like, cool. If you use this on your code challenge, I'm gonna be like, cool. But if you cannot explain the difference, or rather, if you cannot explain what this does, if, if you cannot build them, you cannot explain them to me, that tells me that you don't really understand it. And that is an issue. But ultimately, you do it however you want. You're the developer. Yeah. What a very good question. What a very good question. If I had to absolutely pick one, if I had to absolutely pick one, I would say use this. Because this is the only way to create custom routing. Resources only build, only build, it only builds RESTful routes. If your app does nothing except RESTful routes, you can get away with resources. If you want your app to do literally anything except CRUD, you have to be able to know what this does. You just have to be able to understand this and how to control it. So I will tell you that the convention is if you want a RESTful action, you should just be using the resources for that RESTful action. But if you want your app to do literally anything but CRUD, you have to know this. So I will tell you that resources is a very good convention. Please understand it. 
but this is the only way your app can do anything except CRUD. Does that make sense? So no both, if I had to pick one, pick this. If you are in production and you're at your job and you wrote these three lines and your boss said, hey, can you refactor that into the resources? You should be like, no problem fam, got you, airborne. Right? If your boss asks you to do it and you're like, I don't know how, he or she should probably just tell you, cool, watch the magic. And then just write resources for you and explain like, hey, this is the RESTful route, this is what we're doing. And you will see very often in Rails production a combination of resources and a combination of custom routes. Cool? That's a very good question. Thank you for asking. So I'm going to leave this alone. Is it, is it cool if I leave it like this, just resources for these three? I will tell you this, you're allowed to use everything the Rails provides except scaffold. If you know what scaffold is, don't use it. If you don't know what it is, feel free to look it up and then not use it. <laughs> <laughs> but to sum it up, scaffold will build your entire application for you and we will know exactly when you use scaffold. It will be at that point so much harder to delete the extra stuff scaffold builds for you. It would take you literally the entire like hour to delete everything scaffold builds for you to meet the requirements of the code challenge. In which case, you will get a lot of questions as to like, why did this happen? What is this? Debug this. Can you add one quick feature? And if you can't do any of that, that tells me you don't understand, all right? Um, in the same way that if you learned active record on day three of mod one, and somebody was like, hey, what does, uh, what does this do? Right, but what I'm saying is like, if you got this on like day three, right, could you explain it? Can you explain how it retrieved this? So like what this probably does is, like do, it takes a class method, right? And then probably runs like find on it. Yeah. And then it, it finds where the ID is one. Or it iterates through and just finds like the first thing. You know what I'm saying? So the idea is that you just have to like understand what these helpers do. You could use them if you want to. Please do. If, you, if you're familiar with the helpers, have at it. But I will be careful, if the code challenge or any deliverable ever in your entire life says build the index page and you do this, done, got it boss, I built the route for index. Technically you, you did, but you also built like six more, right? If you 